Здравствуй, товарищ, and welcome to our game European Escalation. I'm Hope Gadling, and today we'll start the final campaign Wasteland with the mission Warlord. I'm going to unlock some units. This mission is special in that we don't get any tanks, but we do get infantry, so I'm unlocking the Soviet version of uh, engineers with BMPs and the awesome MI-28 Havoc helicopter, which at this stage is of course a prototype. Let's separate the wheat from the chaff. We'll just have to cut some heads to convince the others to follow us. Two formations are likely to provide us with manpower and equipment. An East German helicopter squadron and its ground security troops here. And a Polish artillery park that's refitting and training in the Leonid sector. The objective is pretty clear, but our army is small and we don't have that many units. Since the helipark is closer by, I'm going to attempt to take over that one first. There's no point holding Gregory. Uh, I don't get any points from that zone, so I'm just going to abandon it. I guess I could call in more troops, but what I have now with me should be enough to attack the heliport. I don't get any tanks anyway, so calling in more infantry is not going to be that useful. The idea in approaching the Anna zone is pretty simple. I'm going to se se send the Spetsnaz and missile carriers first, and if they run into opposition, they'll have to deal it with it first. And no, infantry doesn't shoot anti-tank rockets at other infantry. Spetsnaz, however, has a napalm thrower that can be shot both against hard and soft targets with equal efficiency. I'm going to keep the Havoc trailing somewhat behind the other troops. There may be some anti-air units near Anna. I don't want to risk getting shot down here. That should be a good place. I can keep an eye over the enemy held FOB. Make sure no one flanks us. Someone was at our flank, 
but I didn't get to see what it was and the missile didn't hit. Since I only have 8 valuable Spetsnaz squads, I'm going to split one off, send him forward, do some scouting. I'm going to take out the unsuspecting Shilkas with my ATGMs. They have a range of 2.8 kilometers here, so I'm comfortably able to simply outrange them and kill them all without them getting a shot back at me. That was an accident. I would have preferred to leave that BMP alive. I'm turning the weapon systems off my havoc until I get a bead on the headquarters. And that's the first set of followers for us. This secondary mission appears suddenly, but fortunately the Havoc is in a good place to take care of it. Even if it weren't, it's fast enough to catch any ground vehicle. I'm going to do some reshuffling. The infantry will come with me. Looks like we are surprised on the side by some OT-64 Scots. The same APCs that have been bothering us ever since we started playing Soviet missions. They are cheap and come with an ATGM, so you can expect to see a lot of them. Still, we had a good position and managed to surprise them, so we took them out without any major problems. Now we have some extra helicopters, the East German Hind variants aren't that special in themselves, but there's quite a lot of them. And there's also a recon chopper that comes with the group. From here on it's a long approach to the Polish artillery park. So I'm going to do a bit of splitting up and careful scouting. It'll take quite some time to approach the artillery park without casualties. It's a bad place for tanks. Again with the shuffling and might as well take over Anna, call in another Havoc helicopter. This mission has been changed in a patch somewhere between 
when the game came out and when I tried to record this. It's got units in new places that I'm not sure where, where they are and it looks like the enemy will also counterattack more vigorously than previously. So we'll have to keep our eyes open and deal with enemy movements as quickly as possible. I'm also going to pair up the Havocs with the Recon helicopter. It's a good idea to give them as much, much side range as possible simply because they have the awesome Ataka ATGMs that can outrange most every system on the battlefield. Thank you. That small depression there should be safe enough for my Spetsnaz troops to start moving forward. I'm going to split up the squads and get eyes on as many places as possible. We don't have any tanks and we don't have any artillery, so digging up the enemy troops might prove to be problematic. Also, there's a big risk of running into ambushes, and if I do, I'd rather lose one squad than all of them. The final campaign in its entirety is a good place to play around with ATGMs and especially attack helicopters. The previous ones have their own uses for choppers, but this one is just built for everything a swift, speedy attack force can do. The first mission is probably the worst for helicopters, and the only reason, reason I'm relying on them for firepower is that I pretty much don't have anything else. If I had tanks, I'd back up my lines with some tanks. If I had artillery, I'd try to randomly bombard Leonid and hope to get the enemy CV that way. But we only have infantry and helicopters. And there are a couple of things you should always keep in mind when operating with large numbers of helicopters. Never fly into unscouted areas. If there's even one or two missile teams defending it, the losses might be severe. If you recall the final mission in Able Archer, helicopters can deal with anti-air, but the losses will still be huge, and at the end of the day, the enemy had suffered five times as many casualties in points as we had. The other thing is that helicopters are really unsuited for this type of uh, slow crawl. You'd optimally want to keep the front fluid. You don't want 
to let the enemy entrench into positions because digging them out with helicopters is not going to happen. Tanks and artillery are much better at that task. As long as the front is fluid, as long as your opponent is actively doing something, then you can use the helicopters to disrupt his movement. It's essentially a fight of maneuvers between your fast helicopters and his gr slow ground troops. And if you're smart and if you have enough recon, you can very well come on top in that fight. But if the enemy refuses to move, if he simply sits down and says, I'm not going to be moved, then your helicopters are better off somewhere else. In a way, I like how the dev team started us off with the mission worst suited for helicopters. It's like they are saying, here you have a chance to make all the heli helicopter related mistakes you want to. Get them all out of the way now and we'll get you into what you can actually accomplish with them later. One enemy scout down. In a fight like this, killing the enemy scouts is important. You want to deny the enemy anti-air and tank units visibility as much as possible. Headquarters are nice to kill, but not nearly as important. If you think about the relative expense of units here. One Havoc is 165 points, one Headquarters is 200 points. But we only ha have a couple of Havoc helicopters and we are not yet getting any more. That's a bad fight for us. That's about uh, as bad a setup as you can possibly get into. The only choice is retreating deeper into the woods, woods, but for that infantry it comes too late. And that's one of my eight precious Spetsnaz squads down. That's exactly what happens when you don't have enough eyes around the area. A missile team from somewhere in a bush will fire off a missile. The first warning you get is when the missile hits. That's most of the visible enemies down. The East German squadron is in a bad shape, so I'll pull it back, get it repaired and rearmed. 
I've also used most of my attackers here, but a scout, especially an unarmed scout, is such a good target. Havocs could probably take one hit from enemy anti-air missiles, but it's still a good idea to push a recon in front of them. The recon hello is a hundred points cheaper and you get more of them. If you lose one, it's not such a huge deal. And that's it, we are almost out. So time to rearm. The enemy keeps sending more units forward. The Ural truck is of course unarmed and we can use the supplies, but it's a pretty safe bet that if we don't start moving actively, They'll, the next wave will have tanks. This is one of the most annoying parts of playing with lots of helicopters. Making sure you get all of them landed for rearming and resupplying. The circle around FOB is rather small and they won't land on top of each other or inside forests or buildings. So you'll have to spend quite some time zoomed in and making sure everyone has enough space. One scout jeep is probably safer to send that far forward than my expensive Spetsnaz units. I've already lost one there. I'll, I'll rather risk a recon jeep than my good fighting troops. Another forceful recon from the enemy. Looks like that's headed straight to the airfield. I left a token defense at the airfield button. Looks like that was, that's not going to be needed. A bunch of pioneers will have to clean out any enem enemy infantry in that forest. We are coming up to a small village, so I need to have some line infantry holding there anyway. That's just a terrible mistake from me. You'd think a player would remember there being an anti-air team, but no, and we lose another Reagan helicopter. Okay. 
Looks like there's quite some active scouting going on near that enemy held FOB. The first task would be to kill all scouts, or at least as many as possible. The forest south of Chad looks pretty safe, so I'm going to sp send my troops forward. That engagement meant went rather well for us. The Fagot teams didn't manage to land a hit and now we are in a good position. If we can just hold it. The enemy has a tendency of pushing back here. But tanks aren't safe from attack helicopters at forest edges. They need to be deeper inside forests. So either you push forward and mix it up with enemy inside the forests or you keep at your side of the map safely hidden away. That's what happens when you push forward with attack helicopters without recon. Fortunately, this time the missile misses. Now, the next immediate task is trying to deal with that Tunguska. As long as it sits there, it creates a huge no-go zone to, for my helicopters. I can somewhat limit, limit its effectiveness by taking out any scouts, as has been my purpose for quite some while now, but at some point I still need to deal with it one way or another. Notice how the Havocs are low on ammunition, but not near enough the supply units to get resupplied. The difference may be small, but it counts. I probably should have noticed it earlier, it saved me a minute or so in the mission time. But just pushing the scout envelope forward is good enough.
too far away would have loved to snipe at that stack with some ATGMs but I don't want to leave the forested position if I get sighted the T-80s will shoot me down in an instant Looks like they are not going to move either So we'll do this the hard way. Fortunately, for once, I have enough time to set up my units properly. The East German helicopters are armed with big rocket pods. I'm going to spread them up out widely enough that one missile can take out several teams at once and charge in with them. They'll have to suppress the Tangaska while the Havocs close in for the kill. We should be good. Waiting around doesn't do us any good. So let's get to war. Timing is important. I got a, got to hit them roughly at the same time with all of my forces. And that's it. That's the anti-air they had. Killing the tanks now is trivial. Those will surely come in handy. I'll try not to lose them if possible. The village looks suspicious. If there is any sort of enemy resistance within, it might be problematic for my vehicles. I can mostly go around it but it's probably still a good idea to get a scout, check out the edge buildings. If someone is within the city, he may be, be there to the end of mission for all I care. The safest way of doing this is sending the infantry in under heavy fire support. If someone in that village shows up, they'll get plastered by both hinds, havocs, leopards and what, whatever we have available. Yet another group of T-64s. It's better to just dodge out of the way. I'd rather not lose any more spetsnaz if possible. Now, I only have enough firepower to support one place at a time. And this time it will have to be the Spetsnaz. So the sappers will have to deal with enemy resistance on their own.
Проверка завершена. К вылету готовы. Getting surprised by infantry in woods sucks. It does so with helicopters also because the infantry small arms are su surprisingly efficient at shooting down helicopters. Still looks like we won that fight and the Spetsnaz squad is still alive. Beaten out of ammo but still alive. That comes in handy. Almost there. Just need to make sure that the enemy hasn't any ambushing units in the forests between here and the HQ. The village still has some enemy infantry left, left within it, but as long as they are not coming out, I'm not going to go after them. Note how the fire spreads inside the village. The exploding sounds you hear every now and then are buildings collapsing when the fire burns them out. The fires in this game have already always been strange to me. Looks like the devs wanted to do something more with them, but in practice they don't do all that much. Транспортный корпус выполнит любое ваше желание. 
This was a mistake from me. Should, should have been more careful with the supply trucks. As it is, I'm just going to leave those two and chuck them off as losses. And that's it. We can already see the enemy headquarters. But the plateau we are on might, might be a hard descent. And of course the enemy will try a final counter attack. At this close range it's really hard to avoid casualties. Any enemy anti-air teams will just have to be dealt with on the fly. I'd rather not shoot up those Malakas. I'd rather just take over them, but what can you do? We have put together a nice little army, but we no longer have the element of surprise. And that's it. All the objectives are completed and we managed quite a handsome kill list with our Havoc helicopters. The losses were quite light. Lots of BMP2s and of course the one Spetsnaz squad and the two recon helicopters hurt. This is Hop Gatling signing out. Peace.